Do you hide your true self behind a mask? Because you feel the real you is not welcome in the workplace. It's mid-morning on Monday, I'm at work, and I have to talk to my department lead, Bill, about staffing my project. So I walk over to his office and knock on the door frame. Come in, sit down. Whoa, you changed your hairstyle again? And you dyed it too? I rack my brain trying to figure out how to explain braids and extensions to Bill. I managed to say, yes, uh-huh. You see, I've worked at this company for 23 years, and the women here have worn the same hairstyle to work. But here you come, switching it up. Was it blonde the last time? I force a smile. He goes on and on about my hair. How maintaining it must be so time consuming and the very harmful side effects of frequent hair coloring. I'm perplexed. This is not what I expected when I walked into his office. In all the years I've lived on this earth, the only comments I've received about my hair are, your hair is beautiful, nah. Or, can I have the name of your hairdresser? Experiences like this are a problem. We'd like to think that they don't happen anymore, but sadly, they do. Today's workplace is increasingly diverse and globalized with 35% of the STEM workforce being a cultural minority. That's one in three. But many individuals who are the cultural minority face the pressure to hide or downplay their cultural identity to fit in or to survive at work. The Deloitte DEI Institute in partnership with the Meltzer Center for Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging, revealed that many US workers shift their identities to assimilate into mainstream work cultures, to maintain and not advance their careers. 60% of the respondents revealed that within the last 12 months, they've had to cover their identities at work to avoid negative stereotypes or being perceived as incompetent. Are you part of the 60%? Are you even aware that 60% of your colleagues are struggling with compromising their true identity to live up to workplace expectations? And what if you can't hide? Let's look at some examples. Professionals may experience biases related to accents or communication styles. Despite their proficiency, their career advancement may be hindered when their accent is deemed difficult to understand. Like my friend Aisha, an exceptional cybersecurity specialist, who received this feedback from her manager after an important presentation. Great analysis. But next time, try turning down the accent. What? She asked, taken aback. To which she responds. If you can't handle it, perhaps Ben can make the presentations going forward. Imagine how you would feel if this was you. Some people may have their hairstyle deemed unprofessional because they do not conform to Eurocentric standards. Some receive unwarranted scrutiny or are not taken seriously because of their appearance. I once had someone tell me that they passed on a candidate because a colleague had seen her leaving the premises with hair different from what she showed up to the interview with. The reasoning being, they found it disrespectful. She couldn't wait to get home to change into that. Thankfully, the Crown Act was passed in 2019 to protect people from hair discrimination. We still have work to do because unfortunately in 2024, it is law in only 24 of the 50 states. Some people encounter assumptions that they're less competent, less intelligent, or less capable due to preconceived notions about their cultural background, heritage, or education. Like a colleague of mine that immigrated to reunite with his family. He had 10 years industry experience and a managerial rank but was offered an entry-level position because they said, and I quote, we don't know what to do over there. 
when they could easily have verified his experience and competence level. Let's go back to my meeting with Bill. I struggled with this incident, but it was the first of so many where people expressed the issues they had with the things that made me different. You're too dressed up. You're too polite. And the best one, we cannot understand you because of your accent. The messaging was coming in often and repeatedly in my case. Be more like us. Less of who you are, less of a woman, less African. I was born in Nigeria to two trailblazing college professors, graduated top 3% of my engineering class, and excelled in my career, yet all the fixated on were my differences. Feeling scrutinized in the workplace, I began suppressing my true self, keeping the same hairstyle, dressing down, avoiding expressing my opinions, hoping to draw less attention to myself, hoping to fit in. How do you relate to this? Have you had similar experiences? Have you been guilty of creating some of the uncomfortable situations we've talked about? And no doubt you're asking yourself the question, now what? What do I do? How do we make things better? One summer, in the midst of my workplace struggles, my parents came to visit. We were sitting around the dinner table, catching up on life, and my father asked me about work. <laughs> work is work, I say. I don't care. I should have known better than say this to my father because he looks at me and says, Ada, this is not you. Where is the drive? Where is the excitement? Where is the little girl that had big dreams and the woman who is not afraid to take risks? Apparently, I had become unrecognizable to the people that knew me the most. And if I was being honest, even to myself. I don't know, Daddy, I say. And through a waterfall of tears, Tell it all. Holding my gaze, my father says to me, Ada, you know who you are. You know where you come from, and no one can ever take that away. And in that moment, I felt a flood of emotion. Something came alive within me, my strong, confident self. The warrior, the princess, the legacy holder, Thinking of my grandparents and what they had accomplished, my parents and the life they had modeled for me, I knew that I had to embrace all parts of me, of them, of my African heritage. Deciding to no longer subject myself to the extremely exhausting practice of sustaining several identities and to choose my workplace intentionally. My job search criteria switched from company projects and pay to culture and people leaning more into the things that made me, me. Like my unbiased and mindful approach to building relationships. My belief in the power of community and how it translates to teamwork and collaboration. Or my unconventional method of solving problems that is rooted in the Nigerian Igbo proverb, Afro Keme, Eme Kafu, which translates to do what you must to figure it out. Leading into all these caused people to begin to take notice and express that they were in awe of this side of me they never knew existed. The practice of fully embracing my cultural identity was so liberating that I made it my mission to help others fearlessly embrace their unique cultural identities. Now, what is cultural identity? Culture refers to the belief, behaviors, and values that define a group of people. It is reflected in the way we speak, the food we eat, the music we dance to, the clothes we wear, and the rituals we practice. It's passed through generations and fosters belonging. Our cultural identity is an incredibly fascinating aspect of our identity that is formed as we absorb the culture, tradition, history, and heritage of the communities we belong to. It influences the way we interact 
with the world around us. I've shared with you a lot about my experience. And now I invite you to consider your cultural identity, what you are or are not embracing. Think about the way you express ideas or incorporate storytelling to effectively convey information. Consider your problem-solving method that emphasizes a holistic approach to decision-making. Reflect on your relationship-building style rooted in traditions of hospitality. Because when I did those things, what my journey revealed to me was the importance of staying true to oneself in spite of external pressures. It made me realize that as professionals, we have a choice and the power to actively protect and preserve our cultural identity. Embracing your cultural identity uncovers your voice and empowers you to make a positive impact. Embracing mine empowered me to found my organization, African Women in STEM. Drawing from my experience and that of others, I will offer you a threefold solution that will support you in valuing your unique cultural identity and leveraging it for your career growth and personal transformation. One, prioritize self-awareness and cultural connection. Self-awareness fosters a strong sense of self while embracing your cultural heritage grounds you and guides how you relate with others. Two, find a supportive network. Belonging to a supportive community of people who share similar cultural backgrounds, experiences, and values will empower you as you navigate cultural and identity-related challenges. And number three, advocate for inclusivity. Advocating for yourself and engaging in open dialogue and cultural exchange with others will help promote understanding, empathy, and inclusivity. Imagine what it will feel like to have your uniqueness celebrated rather than be expected to conform to non-inclusive standards. Imagine belonging in spaces where expressing your cultural identity feels less like a risk. Imagine knowing that your true self is not a liability, but an asset. Together, let's ignite a revolution of inclusivity where each person is valued and celebrated. Embrace your cultural identity, for in it lies the key to unlocking the extraordinary potential that resides within each and every one of you.